In the last few weeks there have been some really cool discoveries in regards to ancient black holes and how they might have influenced the growth of galaxies early on. With some of these discoveries once again being potentially groundbreaking and somewhat unexpected. And naturally when it comes to unexpected strange discoveries, nowadays it's always James Webb. And so essentially James Webb Space Telescope once again discovered something nobody expected, potentially helping us understand how early galaxies evolved and why we're seeing so many different things nobody expected. And so hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's talk about these new studies and new discoveries and what all of this means when it comes to galactic evolution and the early universe. And I guess let's start with the more exciting study that was just released a few days ago. In this case, one of several studies that took a look at these really distant red dots and a variety of other shapes and colors that were discovered in the last few months by the James Webb. We've actually discussed these in some of the previous videos in the description, but we finally have some analysis and exciting explanations for what's probably happening here and what exactly we're seeing. And so we obviously know that these are some of the earliest galaxies, but what was really surprising about these galaxies is how extremely bright they appeared. Their overall brightness was a little bit higher than expected. And this actually led to a lot of speculations, with most scientists agreeing that this was very likely a result of a really massive black hole, forming some of the most active regions we've ever seen in any galaxy, but in this case extremely far away. Something that we definitely do not see in any of the modern galaxies, and something that seems to have been unique to the first few hundred million years right after the Big Bang. And there's a reason why this is actually kind of exciting. Previous simulations and previous assumptions have always focused on galaxies growing in a very kind of a orderly, slow manner, assembling over millions and even billions of years, gradually growing larger and larger by absorbing gas from the outside and also by basically growing the black hole in the middle. And so this process that was simulated many times using various supercomputers such as the one you see right here known as the Illustrious Project kind of showed us that galaxies for the most part seem to grow relatively slow. And that of course includes their black holes. Now once in a while they might get some growth spurts, but overall it's not really that dramatic. Yet that's not at all what we see from the James Webb. All of these recent observations show us a lot of chaos, a huge amount of activity, and more importantly, a tremendously massive powerful black hole right in the middle. With some of these galaxies producing way more light than expected. And we've discussed this in a little bit more detail in one of the recent videos in the description in regards to new analysis of the famous galaxy known as GNZ11. A galaxy that's way too bright, much brighter than it should be, approximately 400 million years after the Big Bang. And here this black hole is way too massive, approximately 1.6 million masses of the Sun, which makes this really difficult to explain. And it's not just massive, it's also causing the entire galaxy to become extremely bright, much brighter than anything around it. Which overall confirms one important hypothesis, the so-called direct collapse model, which suggests that it's quite likely that early massive black holes didn't actually start from stars or from some other means, but were created through direct collapse of a lot of gas all at once, forming massive black holes right in the middle of a lot of other gas. And that was basically the seed for many different galaxies. These direct collapse black holes started a process that eventually formed modern galaxies and eventually formed the universe as we know today. And so it was not a slow methodical process, it might have been an extremely fast, extremely chaotic process that was much much faster than anything scientists believed before. And because a lot of these early galaxies were also much richer in gas, this presents us with a very different environment. Because it's really this extremely high density that didn't just allow for these black holes to form, it also allowed for a massive star formation that turned these early galaxies so extremely bright. But previously it was assumed that these powerful black holes would then cause these galaxies to basically die. They would stop forming stars because of the galactic wind and they would eventually become a quiescent. This was kind of difficult to explain though because it's not really what we see in modern universe. We do see these large galaxies with a lot of stars, so something doesn't add up, with this new study potentially explaining everything once and for all. Which came first, supermassive black holes or galaxies? Yeah, so I guess it's that chicken or the egg question. And this is a really intriguing study because they do provide a lot of evidence and a super interesting explanation, to some extent summarized in this picture. 
early on, in the first few hundreds of millions of years, it actually looks like the galaxies and the black holes had a very different interaction from what we believe happened afterwards. At first, at higher redshifts, up to 15, this is where we see gas suddenly collapsing into a central region and basically forming these over densities that eventually become seeded supermassive black holes. And because there is already gas around them, they suddenly start something really incredible. Because suddenly there's this really dense, really massive object in the middle, it starts to churn the gas around even more and creates a huge amount of over densities around it, basically creating a kind of a positive feedback for the formation of a large number of new and possibly really massive stars. Possibly even these mysterious population 3 stars we still haven't seen. And so these massive black holes that formed around the same time as first stars basically worked hand in hand promoting star formation and star growth just because there was so much gas around them. As a matter of fact, they might have been amplifying the effect of star formation by a tremendous amount. Without these black holes, the star formation would have been much more timid and unlikely to produce these very bright galaxies. And so this positive feedback or this amplification effect was very likely the reason why we're seeing so many extremely bright galaxies out there, which also of course implies that it was the massive black holes in the center that also very likely produced some of the first really massive population 3 stars. But even more intriguingly, the star formation itself would then also increase the amount of gas entering the black hole, thus allowing the black hole grow larger and larger and larger. So this was an intriguing double positive feedback. A kind of an interplay between the black hole and the newly born stars that encouraged growth for at least a few million years. And that of course explains why we see this and so many, many more. As a matter of fact, it pretty much explains all of these observations really well. But after about a billion years of doing this, the galaxy would reach a density state that's not really conductive to positive feedback. And so it's at this state that it sort of enters the next stage, the negative feedback, where the active black hole in the middle instead starts to actually deplete the gas and forces the galaxies to become quiescent as we've always believed them to become. This is pretty much what we observe from a lot of quasars around this time. And so basically here the galaxies go from a highly enriched stage with a lot of dense gas around them to the stage that quenches star formation and encourages negative feedback that to some extent kills the galaxies completely. With most of this negative feedback caused by powerful winds that eventually drove the gas out of the galaxies instead of causing the gas to form new stars. With all of this very likely just being the matter of gas density. If the gas is not dense enough, it kind of just flows out of the galaxy without doing anything. But if it's really dense, like it was in the first billion years, it creates a lot of regions around the galaxy where stars suddenly form all at once. And so here the researchers propose a new timeline. Because by looking at light spectra and different chemical signatures from many of these distant galaxies, they discovered that this unusual shift very likely happened 13 billion years ago, or roughly around 800 million years after the Big Bang. But in order to prove this, or in order to make this an actual theory, researchers believe we still need to have computer simulations that would be able to directly explain how all of this happened. Right now, current simulations are just a little bit too simple. And so it might still take a few years for all of this to be confirmed. But since previous studies also confirmed that many of these early galaxies did actually have really massive central black holes, very often with masses equaling the total mass of the entire galaxy, at least in terms of observational evidence, it seems to be there. And so basically what all of this means is that it was really the massive black holes that very likely influenced most of the galactic formation, most of the star formation, and created the galaxies as we know them today. But even though this is a pretty good explanation for what we've seen so far, there's still a bit of a problem, actually from a slightly different study. A problem of not really seeing enough of these black holes out there. Now this is based on a slightly different study that mostly focused on differences between previous observations from the Spitzer telescope with the observations from the James Webb, but in a nutshell, when comparing three different telescopes, MIPS on the left, Spitzer in the middle, and James Webb on the right, the researchers surprisingly discovered that there was actually a kind of a lack of rapidly growing supermassive black holes in the early universe. Now previously Spitzer did discover quite a lot, and so the scientists actually expected to find even more with the James Webb. But when they compared Spitzer to James Webb, unfortunately, even with a huge boost of power from the James Webb, 
they only found very few additional supermassive black holes compared to what they expected to find. Or I guess more realistically, they just found a lot less active galaxies, with many other galaxies potentially just growing much slower and thus being completely invisible. Which is very intriguing because it suggests a much slower pace for most galaxies compared to some extreme examples. Which in essence suggests that even though we might have figured out how some galaxies grow and how they develop and how black holes interact with stars, average and smaller galaxies, and more importantly, galaxies similar to our own, the Milky Way, still do not have a very good explanation for how they evolved and how they formed. Especially since the black hole in the middle of our own galaxy for the most part seems to be kind of small. And so if our galaxy did not grow like some of those other ones we've discussed a few minutes ago, then how exactly did it form and how exactly did we get so many stars? If the black hole in our galaxy was never active, then that first idea behind the galactic growth and black holes suddenly doesn't make sense once again. And so yeah, there's still a major mystery. A mystery that nobody can answer just yet, but then again, it's only been like two years since the James Webb became operational, so chances are that in the next few years we might have our answers after all. And until then, check out some of the previous videos on this topic in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.